you start from these mountains and there are a lot of stairs to reach the mountains from behind. And uh, the stairs made by uh, There's a doorway. Welcome to Jordan. You may have heard of uh, the most famous archaeological site in Jordan, which is called Petra, which is huge. It's hundreds of acres in size. This is Little Petra. So Little Petra is 10 minutes away from the major site itself. So of course, it's part of the whole complex. It's just that the government has designated a certain amount of area uh, for the National Archaeological Site. And this is likely um, part of the national system, but there's no toll booth, there's no payment, no guards but amazing things to look at. Why would you?
So conventional scholarship tells us rather unconvincingly that it was a people who were nomadic called the Nabataeans who built Little Petra and Grand Petra uh, between somewhere between 300 BC and 100 AD. But if, uh, if they were nomadic people, would they be carrying thousands of steel chisels with them in order to do all of this work? It's clear that the Nabataeans found Little Petra and Big Petra, which are the same complex. They simply occupied them, and over the course of time, had someone do a bit of ornamentation carving, but they certainly did not build this complex. I do have more than one other video about the Grand Petra complex on my YouTube channel, and if you like this video, please click thumbs up and subscribe, because I have like 900 videos. No tengo plata. But you're being paid to take care of her. <laughs> That's the difference. We're looking at the tool that was employed to shape this and many, many other uh, depressions or chambers or whatever you want to call them at uh, Little Petra. And so what you can see is this is one kind of tool, probably a hand tool because it's not regular. It comes in here, it goes on a curve, it goes on a curve like that. It's very irregular. And then here is a tool that's coming down like that. It's more regular down here. So that could be part of the rough shaping process. But then there 
and especially because it's blackened here, you see this tool may have been, may not be a hand tool because it's just so even, evenly spaced. The other question is how was this chamber cut out? That would take something that could remove material quite rapidly. This sandstone is beyond the capability of being cut or worked with by bronze tools. So that, uh, that takes us at least into the Iron Age period. Uh, Assyrian steel may have come here as early as 800 BC, about the same time that it was introduced to ancient Egypt. But the chambers would take, I would think, power tools because it's just so much volume of material to remove. This is the hand, this is the point where it looks like they changed direction with their handheld tool. Uh -huh. Coming down and then going sideways, but this yeah. I didn't see the first time. That's interesting. Looks like the end of the tool and almost maybe it melted it. Yeah, it looks like it. It's all over at the ends of these points. Uh-huh. Yeah, it almost looks like ice cream. Yeah. <laughs>